The GOAT, greatest player of all time. A debate which has been percolating around various NBA hot stoves for the better part of 60 years. And generally the individuals who owned each decade, beginning in the 1960s and running all the way until today, are the players most commonly found in these top 10 conversations and GOAT debates. But who are the GOATs of each decade, and how thoroughly did they dominate their specific eras? In most cases, many if not all decades are up for some kind of debate. Was it the individual dominance of Wilt, or the leadership and winning of Russell that ruled the 1960s? And while Kareem was the greatest individual of the 70s, he hardly produced a stranglehold on the league, winning only two titles in that 10 year span that were separated by nine years in between. While the 80s were a pure coin toss between Bird and Magic, and even more recent decades lacked the separation, many may think. In really only one obvious case can you say a player declaratively and singularly owned an entire decade. Not surprisingly, that player was Michael Jordan, and that decade was that of the 1990s. While Jordan predictably did not distance himself from a stat accrual standpoint here, as his 15,261 total points scored during this 10 year span doesn't even rank in the top 15 all time for highest scoring decades. In fact, it isn't even the highest total of that decade as Karl Malone scored well over 5,000 more points than Jordan during the 90s. And during that 10 year span, few filled up a stat sheet like the mailman, delivering per game averages of 27 points, 11 rebounds, four assists, one and a half steals, and one block per night for this decade. Malone was named an all-star every season of the 90s, while being named first team All-NBA nine times with one second team All-NBA selection sprinkled in and adding three first team defensive selections as well. Malone did all of this while missing only three total games during the entire decade, producing a resume that should place him at the very top of any GOAT list, not just the 90s. However, there was one all-important thing noticeably absent from Malone's resume during not only this decade of the 90s, but for his entire NBA career. Yes, of course, Malone failed to capture even a single NBA title during this 10-year span. And of course, the 90s ushered in the golden era of the big man, as joining Malone was Shaquille O'Neal, David Robinson, Patrick Ewing, all rising to prominence in the late 80s through 90s. All of these players to this day a fixture in NBA all-time top 50 to 75 rankings. But there was one legend right in the middle of it all that was arguably better than them all, even if he was only a dream. And while Hakeem Olajuwon's true prime ended before the decade of the 90s concluded, he produced arguably the best playoff run in NBA history, beginning with the 1993-94 season. A season where he was first team all NBA, first team all NBA defense, league MVP, and defensive player of the year while winning the championship and being named finals MVP. The list of other players to accomplish that in one season includes no one. In the playoffs that season, he beat the 47-win Portland Trailblazers in the first round, led by Clyde Drexler. In the second round, it was the 56-win Phoenix Suns, led by Charles Barkley. And into the Western Conference Finals, it was the Stockton and Malone Utah Jazz, before beating the Patrick Ewing Knicks in the Finals. Houston's second best player on this team was Otis Thorpe, who averaged 14 points per game and made one career all-star appearance in his 19-year career. Simply put, this is one of the most ludicrous playoff runs ever when factoring in the competition and his supporting cast. And after the Houston Rockets would win only 47 games the following season and finish as just the sixth seed in the Western Conference playoffs, Hakeem would go full on legend in the 1995 playoffs, beating the 60 win Stockton and two time league MVP Carl Malone, Utah Jazz, in the first round. Yes, a 60 win opponent in round one. And in the second round, it was the 59 win former league MVP Charles Barkley Suns before getting into the Western Conference Finals and facing off with the 62 win San Antonio Spurs led by that season's league 
League MVP, David Robinson. Once Hakeem cleared these hurdles, waiting for him in the NBA Finals was future League MVP Shaquille O'Neal, and Hakeem would dominate this Magic team and Shaquille O'Neal in the NBA Finals, sweeping them four games to none. Four rounds, four league MVPs, and a collective winning percentage of his four opponents of 73%, the highest faced by any champion in NBA history. Hakeem is one of the very greatest full court players in basketball history. And for the decade of the 90s, he averaged 23 points, 11 rebounds, three assists, three blocks, and nearly two steals. And joining Hakeem were other great players and teams throughout this decade, from Charles Barkley and his son squads, to the aforementioned Stockton and Malone Utah Jazz, to the loaded Seattle Supersonics led by Gary Payton and Sean Kemp that averaged 60 wins per season for six consecutive years in the middle of the 90s, and even that meteoric rise of the Shaquille O'Neal and Penny Hardaway magic in the middle portion of the decade. And none of them won shit during the 90s, thanks to one player. And as great as many others were during this decade, anything they accomplished during the 90s pales in comparison to the one and only Michael Jordan. Yes, he didn't lead this decade in total points scored, but that is, of course, because Jordan played only six full seasons of the 10 years within this decade retiring for the entirety of the 1993-94 season and the vast majority of the 94-95 season before retiring again at the end of the 97-98 season and sitting out the last two years of the 90s. But during the six full seasons he played, Jordan led the decade in points per game at 30.3, which is over three and a half points per game more than Karl Malone during this decade, while being named All-NBA first first team and first team defense all six years. So Jordan was the best player at his position on both sides of the floor for the 90s, while scoring at a substantially higher rate than anyone else, leading the league in scoring all six years. And of course, most importantly, he won at an absurd level as he went to six finals in those six seasons he played, winning all six of them. There is no conversation to be had here. No close calls or coin tosses. What Jordan did in that decade of the 90s was the most complete and thorough domination by any player in any era of basketball history, which is why to many, Jordan stands heads and shoulders above everyone else, even on basketball's Mount Rushmore. And while that does conclude our look at the 90s, make sure to subscribe and tune in for the next episode of The Goat by Decades, when we take a look at an absolutely stacked decade with a multitude of top 10 to 15 all-time players, the 2000s. Until next time.